Imagine if you had not eaten for 30 days and you were starving to death and someone presented you with a bowl of Brussels sprouts. You'd probably knock them back down your throat and finish the bowl and ask for more. You'd be so hungry, you'd want another bowl of Brussels sprouts. What's that got to do with this album? Watch and find out. A very warm welcome to you, my friend, wherever you may be in the world. So, today we're talking about Memento Mori. Now, I've done quite a few videos on this, if you look back on my history. The very first one was my reaction video to, my initial reaction to the song Ghosts Again. I also did one where I reacted to My Cosmos Is Mine. And also, if you go to my streaming site, which is for members only, I did a live reaction to the whole album, and that's on watchvg.com. So I've done quite a bit of listening to this album and, you know, initial reactions and things like that. But I thought before I give, like, my final verdict on it, I need some space. I need some perspective. Now, if you look at the previous videos I've done on the subject of Memento Mori and some of the singles, you will see that I often mention that you know, we had been starved for a new Depeche Mode album. I think there's been a six-year gap since Spirit was released. So because of that reason, I think we were all very starved for a new Depeche Mode album. And it's for that reason that I thought I, instead of reviewing it right away, I will do an initial reaction video. And then I want to just kind of take a step back and just let the dust settle and just live with it for a while and see, you know, how I feel about it. And I'm pleased to say... I think I'm at a point now where I can give it a a rating. Remember, it doesn't matter how unbiased or impartial you wish to be. We as human beings always see life and hear it and experience it through the lens of our own experience. I'm sorry to get philosophical there, but I, I think it's worth mentioning. So it doesn't matter how impartial I or any other reviewer wishes to be, we are always going to be biased by our personal experience of life and everything. If of life in general. <laughs> now, before I jump into this, I just want to give a little bit of a trigger warning alert. For those of you who come here and are new to the channel and have not been here before, I'm welcoming you with open arms. But if you're easily triggered and offended, then click away now. And if you think the videos are too long, there is a platform called TikTok for people with fishbowl mentalities and short concentration spans. Right here, we go deep and dark in depth without any apologies. You've been warned. And if you're easily offended, I, don't care. I, love I do hope you will stick around till the end of this video where I'll be giving you some really, really exciting news regarding events that I've never done before, which are brought to you by this channel. A Brian Griffin Depeche Mode photographic book, also a Gareth Jones event where we're going to dive deep into the multi-tracks of Construction Time Again, an event here in London. But we'll speak about that at the end of the show. For now, though, it's Memento Mori. So, as you know, I'm doing a ongoing Depeche Mode album review series. You will find a lot of those videos on my channel. Um, I don't know any other YouTuber or independent creator who's gone into the levels of depth that this channel has, and you can find all those videos there. And indeed, if you want to go even deeper, you can join my members only watchvg.com streaming site. So we're kind of jumping the gun a little bit. This is not going to be a full in-depth review, but I will at the end give you, you know, my review out of 10, what I think. Remember, my opinions on this. So starting off with my cosmos is mine. Really great atmospheric track. If you remember the first track we heard from this when they did their conference, uh, we heard a, a, a snippet of Ghosts again. Depeche Mode then released My Cosmos Is Mine just before the album dropped, and that was obviously a more experimental track. Ghosts again, as I said in all my videos, I instantly liked it. It was instantly a lot more lighthearted and a lot more, really kind of like a, you know, back to basics kind of sound. And it was something I pleaded with, uh, in my previous video, because after the disappointment that was Spirit, 
I did say, please, guys, if you're going to come back, stop trying to be so innovative and push the frontiers. Just give us an honest, eyes wide open, sincere album and just focus more on the songs and less on the production. And that's what that is exactly what we got here. So I was very, very happy when I heard this. I was very nervous when I first listened to it because I was scared it was going to be a repeat of Spirit. Whereas some of the hallmarks of Spirit are in here, um, it is fundamentally a much better album. But My Cosmos is Mine, a great way to start the the album. Uh, it's very sort of like, um, boom, boom, you know. I think if you look at the Depeche Mode uh, uh, discography, a lot of their albums start off in a very uh, radical way. I mean, if you think of I Feel You on from the Songs of Faith and Devotion album, just that you turn it on and it's like, what the hell? So a lot of their albums do that. So they do like to start albums off in a way that grabs your attention. Um, and of course, My Cosmos Is Mine is currently being used as the opening track for their live world tour, which I will be attending here at London in Twickenham Stadium. But what do I think of My Cosmos Is Mine? Once again, it's it's an atmospheric track. It's uh, experimental. It's typical Depeche Mode. I like the bum 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 by our man, Mr. Peter Gordino. Do 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 do. I'm going to devise a Peter Gordino ringtone, which goes do 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 do. <laughs> Remain on topic, boy. This song does throw a curveball at you, you know, which is very typical of Depeche Mode songs. Uh, when it gets to the bridge, or whatever, whatever it's called, it's the part that goes no war, no war, no war, no fear, and you're kind of like, oh, okay, um, listening to it. As I said, I've listened to this a lot and then took a break from it and then took about a three-week break from it and came back to it. And when I heard that, no war, no war, I was a little bit like, okay, this is like slash your wrists. It's a bit like, oh, God, too much. Now, it is important now that I give you a little bit of context. Once again, we can only review things through the lens of our own physiology and perception. So, I think really think without getting into too much detail here i really think that the last two albums that i released um my fiance seems to think they've damaged my psychology because they were so in her opinion dark and depressing <laughs> even though they've been well received by critics and the fans um i guess what i'm saying is and, and, and this occurring through lockdown you know producing this really dark body of work uh, going to a very dark place mentally i think that has kind of affected me um Badly, maybe? I, I don't seem to think so, but my fiancé seems to think so. Even my dad, who's my biggest fan, said to me, what were you thinking, you know? Now, forgive me for going off on a tangent. As I said in the beginning of the video, context is very important. And the reason I tell you that is because if I had reviewed this album, let's say, four years ago before I produced some of my darkest work and before we had lockdowns and before the world went crazy, I may have seen it differently. I guess what I'm saying is, My personal experience and what I've, you know, produced and been through as a human being has um, influenced my perception on this. I think it's important for me to say that because we as humans, we do not see the world the way it is. We see it the way we are. You'll get the picture and I'm sure those of you who are TikTok fans have probably clicked off from this video. And I say to you, adios. But for the rest of you who are still here, my cosmos is mine did like it. I just found that central part of no war, no war. Uh, whereas I initially liked it, I, I just can't listen to it anymore. It's just like, okay. And that is, as I said, I just think I've just, I, I think I'm just done with dark, miserable music. <laughs> Sorry. And uh, yeah, and, and the world is kind of dark and miserable at the moment. And that is probably why I probably don't enjoy listening to this album much at the moment because of that. I do like Wagging Tongue, the way it comes in straight on the heels of My Cosmos Is Mine. Uh, as I said on my one of my reaction videos, I was like, oh, has Vince Clark just stepped into the room? Because it has really got that... Dum, 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 dum. It's a little bit like a horror movie. You know, we have like a horror scene and then it cuts to a scene of, in, in the daytime. It's a little bit like that. It's kind of like a... <sighs> relief you won't do well to silence me i like this song they've just recently dropped the music video and like with most depeche mode videos very often the videos have got nothing to do with the song but i like that anyway it's you know it's artistic the video was very very well done i've got no criticisms there wagging tongue i think is a nice 
what I call album track. I don't think it's as brilliant as what some people think it is or say it is, but then again, that's my personal opinion. Um, but I do like I do like the journey of this album. And as I said, Depeche Mode are always very good at when they produce an album. They're very good at the arc, for instance, how it starts and how the journey flows. So uh, Wagging Tongue on the back of My Cosmos is Mine works very, very well. Once again, the production and everything on that, you know, good. Um, nothing groundbreaking, but then again, in my plea video, which I issued them last time, here is a plea from VG to you. I just said, please, you know, just give us a, a sincere, honest album. Stop trying to be so innovative and pushing the boundaries. And uh, Wagging Tongue is indeed that song. Honest, direct, you know, sincere, and I really like it. Um, don't love it, but I like it. We then get the feature track Ghosts again, and as I said on my initial reaction, me being a huge Depeche Mode fan, very often, uh, you know, if, if I take albums like Violator and Songs of Faith and Devotion, which are my favorite albums, um, a lot of the songs when I heard those the first time, I didn't necessarily like them. I, it, it took a while to grow on me. It's a little bit like, um, let's go on a tangent again. People are strange when you're a stranger. Faces are ugly when you're alone. There's a lot of truth in that. You know, when you meet new people, their faces are not ugly, but <laughs> they, yeah, you get used to them. And it's a little bit like that with music. I find it takes time for something to get under your skin. Ghosts again, however, had a familiarity to it. And also I explained in that video because it uses a very sort of common chord progression. So it was quite familiar. You kind of felt you'd heard it before, but it was because of that reason. And it's kind of eyes wide open delivery. And also it just, it just had lyrics. I love the lyric. Everybody says goodbye. I mean, that is like the lyric I take away from the song. And it, and of course we had just lost Fletch, rest in peace, Fletch. And you know, this, it, it, the timing and everything worked. Listening to Ghosts again now critically, I do think it's a little bit, I don't want to say lightweight, but it just, I don't think it could, I don't think the final record is as impactful as it could be. Now, I don't want to get all Alan Wilder fanboy alert here, but we all know if, if, if the boss was there, this would have sounded a lot different. And indeed, uh, check out a video coming out soon where I'm going to be talking about the Wilder Gore dynamic based on a, a, a article I read on, on them. Anyway, um, Ghosts Again, I do like it, but as I say, listening to it, I just feel it's a little bit lightweight. As I say, I took a break from this album and listening to it now, I think it's a little bit lightweight, but then again, I have to bring in my personal perception. Me having worked on very hard, dark music uh, and then recently been recruited by the band Mesh, uh, who I'm honored to be playing with because they are one of my favorite bands. And what what an honor. Um, here's a shout out. Check out Mesh. Just just check out the way they do it. It's hard hitting. It's energetic. It's anthemic. And I think Depeche Mode could learn a lot from their uh, songs. Even though it's not a competition, I just think that, you know, personally, I think that th th there are things here that that I feel could be could have been done uh, better. Although I'm kind of contradicting myself because I said, please give us an album that is sincere and eyes wide open. Don't necessarily try and push the production. I do think, though, even that being my 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 so-called advice, if you forgive me for being that arrogant, I still think that a lot of the production choices in this album in general leave a lot to be desired. Certainly listening to Go Ghosts again, you know, I do love the song as a fan, but if I'm listening to it as a producer... And I'm not trying to get up my own arse here. I'm just giving you my honest opinion. I do think that there's... I, I just think it sounds a little bit underdeveloped. Um, and I'll get into some of the sort of production choices in general a bit later on. We then get on to Don't Say You Love Me. You'll be the killer. I'll be the cops. Oh. Yeah. Uh, now we get, we get back to gloomy, dark, Depeche Mode again. That song and some of the songs on this album do remind me of sort of like theme music or kind of music that could be used in movies like the, you know, TV series like The Sopranos and, uh, you know, sort of like these dark Italian gangster movies. Anyway, those are just the images that they kind of conjure up in my mind. My favorite stranger. Once again, dun, 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 dun. I always go with the initial melody. What am I getting from it? Dun, 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 dun. Once again... This particular song, um, 
to me is more based on innovation. I've spoken about this before in previous videos. Like if you take an album like, let's take a classic album like Black Celebration, you know, get songs like Question of Lust, which are, um, you know, you strip them back to a piano. They're beautiful. They beautifully melodic and you know, and emotional and everything. Then you take a song like um, A Question of Time uh, and you strip it back to piano. It, you know, it doesn't really work, but it's more based on technology. So just like the example I've given you there, my perfect stranger. It's very more. It's more of a kind of a, a technology song with a kind of leaning towards. You know, you can hear there a bit of a craft work leaning and things like that. So. Um, so far as the song goes, forgettable and not great, I don't think. We then get track six, and like with every Depeche Mode album, you're waiting to hear the golden voice of the the golden boy, as I call him, Martin Gore. I taking my soul with me. <clears throat> Early morning breath. But yeah, Martin loves his vibrato, and he, you know, he's not trying to hide it. Um, some of you don't like the vibrato. Some of you say it's overdone. Um, I have said that based on what I've heard on this record and definitely the live footage I've seen from their recent world tour, I think their vocals are brilliant. They're like really, really on point. I don't know if they've been seeing vocal coaches or what, but the vocals are on top form. And indeed in this album, the vocals are very good. I can't complain about that. <sighs> Track seven, okay. The, oh my God, I've tried to like this. I've tried to understand it, but it's an instant skip for me. Caroline's monkey. Come on, guys. Oh my god. But then again, you know, I'm I'm not very bright. I I'm I'm the guy who sits and listens to jazz while everyone's going, Oh my god, this is wonderful. And I'm going, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I I, I just you know, you know, I'm as common as Fook. Hey man, I'm a small town mining boy born in South Africa. What the fuck do I know? But one thing about me, I'm honest and I tell you the way it is. Now, I don't understand this song. I don't understand it i just don't get it fading's better than fading lame 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 <laughs> i'm sorry does it fit on the album yes as part of the journey and the arc it's not bad i'm not hating on it but it's just a bit like caroline's monkey something depeche mode get from me a lot and something they get from a lot of fans is they get a free pass what I mean by that is, if you were a new artist and you released that, I think a lot of people would be like, what? But Depeche Mode do get away with murder because a lot of their stuff, we just want to love it. Even Spirit, I wanted to love it. I really wanted to love that album. But I've often referred to Spirit as the kind of Batman and Robin of the Depeche Mode catalog. It's it's just not a good album. I'm just going to just calm myself right there. So Caroline's Monkey, instant skip for me. I just don't... I'm, no, 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 just no. We then get Before We Drown, also one of the better songs on the album. Uh, Before We Drown. And this one written by Garn, Eigner, Gordino and Christian. So everyone except Martin. And, and indeed, what makes this album unique is the fact that um, Martin has surrendered a lot of the songwriting uh, um, uh duties to to other band members uh, he seems a lot less precious than than he was in the in the heyday or maybe he just feels he, he needs a bit of help and also you know uh, a lot of the songs were collaborations between martin gore and richard butler including caroline's monkey yeah i just i'm sorry i just don't get that song really don't i should do a video on depeche mode songs that i just really don't get beautiful chord progressions in before we drown a great song I really, it really stood out to me as one of the best songs in this album. We then get to People Are Good. Doom, doom, doom. Now, once again, this is another technology based song because if you strip this back to a piano or an acoustic instrument, I keep telling myself people are good. It's not, it just doesn't resonate with me. Uh, but yes, Vaughn, it's, it's, it's very, it's, it's a nod to craft work and it's very craft work. And yeah, so what? I mean, yeah, how many, how many times has that been done before? So yeah, it's a, it's a, track based on innovation yeah it sounds sonically good i it just but it doesn't resonate with me it's a little bit like here we go again let's take charlize theron i'm going on a tangent now but stay with me i think we'll all agree she's a very very beautiful woman but to me personally she just doesn't do it for me uh and 
What are you saying, Vaughn? Do you think you're God's gift to woman? No, what I'm saying is I have a friend who just thinks she's the most gorgeous woman in the world. And I just say, okay, I can see she's a beautiful woman, but she just doesn't do it for me. Now, why am I saying that? The reason being is that, you know, feelings are the way they are. Feelings are not good or bad. They just are the way they are. Here's another example. I had a friend and she really had the hots for Tommy Lee Jones. I kid you not. Most girls I know fancy Brad Pitt. I mean, he's just like, I think we can agree, he's the most amazing looking man ever created <laughs> by God. But she, no, she wasn't into Ryan Gosling or Brad Pitt or any of that. She was into Tommy Lee Jones. I kid you not. She would, she would drool over Tommy Lee Jones. She fucking loved Tommy Lee Jones. Why are you going off topic, Vaughn? The point I'm trying to make, excuse my metaphorical brain. This is just the way I operate and I don't make any excuses for it anymore. The reason being, we like what we like. Things resonate with us and they just do. So I have tried to sort of like certain songs, yeah. And I'm just honest to say, People are good is an example of a song that, yeah, yeah, okay. But I, do I turn it on and dance around the studio? No, I don't. So... I'm sure you can get what I'm saying. We then get Always You, one of the, probably my favorite track on the album. Listen to the opening, my love. It does remind me of something by Talk Talk. Imagine Mark Hollis, God rest his soul. Imagine Mark Hollis singing that line, my love. You can, you can hear it, can't you? Imagine Mark Hollis singing that line. You can. You can, you can just hear it. I love the atmosphere in this song. This is Gore at his best. Yes, the golden boy Martin Gore did write that song. Love this one. I, I, I can say without a doubt now that this is my favorite song on this album. Track 11, Never Let Me Go. Um, this one kind of, when I initially heard it, I thought, oh God, it's, 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 it's the drum track from... Um, What's that song that everyone likes, but I can't stand it? It's uh, oh, oh, Lily. Uh, um, so it, it, it starts off giving those Lillian vibes, but it is a far better track, you know, uh, production, execution, and emotional and everything. Not one of my favorites, but, uh, you know, a, a pretty decent track. And then it ends with Speak to Me, and this is certainly one of the most sort of emotional um, songs on the album, you know. Garn is really at the top of his game here vocally and you know and, and this you know being one of the best songs he's written I believe it's a co-write let me just double check that it is indeed a co-write written by Dave Garn, Christian Eigner, James Ford and Marta so far as Depeche Mode albums go this is a very very what I'd like to call collaborative album there are so many co-writers and if you just look at the the, the credits page I mean it looks like a movie cast. I mean, there are so many. I've never seen a Depeche Mode. I, I can't remember of, of many albums I've seen that have got this many people involved. Now, there is this kind of, um, I think, in the Depeche Mode camp, I get this feeling certainly from the more recent albums, and I don't mean any disrespect by that. I think there's this kind of desire to put out a good record, as there understandably would be. But then there's almost this thing of endless resources. I've often said that necessity is the mother of invention. If we fast forward back to 1982, 1983, when this band were not being taken seriously because they were seen as a teeny bop boy band, by the time they teamed up with Gareth Jones, there was this real conscious effort to really shake that image and to become a very credible act and, you know, and band. And indeed, they did do that. And if you look at the production teams around about that time, it was typically Depeche Mode and a producer. If we look at the Berlin Trilogy, it was Depeche Mode with Gareth Jones, Daniel Miller, you know, and then later on we had, you know, Dave Bascombe. Later on it was Violator and Songs of Faith and Devotion. Small production team and with some great engineers like Steve Lyon, who I just interviewed. The point I'm trying to make is they were very, very small production teams and those records were the best they've ever done. This with like a lot of the previous albums, huge production teams. And indeed this one I feel has got the hugest production team. So I feel there's this kind of, there's this tendency to be like, okay, we have endless resources. Well, virtually endless resources. Let's just throw as much money as we can to this. So the production of this album must have cost a fortune, you know. And I guess what I'm trying to say is, my friend, is that 
There are so many bands out there these days, both signed and unsigned, that are doing this genre of music so much better than Depeche Mode. I think Depeche Mode have kind of been left behind. I'm glad to see they're still here. I'm glad to hear that we got this album. I would have hated to have heard that Depeche Mode are retiring and saying, okay, we're finished now. Their spirit, we're out of here. Thank God. They've 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 redeemed themselves with this album. Um to those who've said things like, oh, this is the best album they've ever done, I've heard a few of those comments. I'm like, what are you smoking, man? Uh, no, this is definitely not the album, best album they've ever done, and I will give you my score out of 10 in a moment. Now, in the beginning of the video, I mentioned a bowl of Brussels sprouts, and the reason I said that was, okay, it was a, an extreme example. I'm, I hate Brussels sprouts, okay? I think most of you do. I'm not trying to compare this to a bowl of Brussels sprouts. The point I'm trying to make is, is that if you were starving to death and someone gave you Brussels sprouts, you'd eat them and they would taste wonderful. I guess the, if you can excuse the cruel comparison, what I was trying to say was we had not heard a Depeche Mode album for so long that we were absolutely desperate to hear one. So, hence the reason when we heard this, I think some people just went, oh my God, this is wonderful. And the truth is, it is a good album. I don't think it is a brilliant album, personally speaking. I think some of the production uh, decisions on here, although the album is very, very cohesive in my opinion, you know, things like using the, fundamentally using the same drum kit throughout every song, I can see why that is done because it does give the album a sense of cohesion. Remember when you're producing an album, you want, you know, you're, it's a story. That is why I'm so against, you know, like streaming sites where you can pick songs, you know, from different artists and make playlists. It's a wonderful technology, but I'm quite old school. When I listen to an album, I like to listen to an album from beginning to end. That is why I love vinyl. So I love to, uh, you know, engage in the story and listen to the story that the artist is trying to convey. So, so far as story and journey, I think it's very, very good. Um, once again, personal opinion on some of the production. I just feel some of the songs are not are not fully developed. I do think it does have a little bit of a demo mode kind of quality certainly in songs like ghosts again i think it could have been a little bit more hard hitting and by hard hitting i don't mean like boom boom wooster, stas, stas, yeah, yeah, like german goth i don't mean that i just mean just a little bit more just with a bit more crunch once again you know me producing very sort of hard music and sessioning with a band called mesh um my ears and my taste leans to that direction so i understand that I'm speaking through the filters of my own perceptions here. But I still think Ghosts Again could have, uh, could, it, it, it just could have been a little bit more, you know, a bit more punchy. You know, even songs like Wagging Tongue, which I like, um, you know, it, some of them just sound a little bit underdeveloped. Um, and also, uh, you know, on, on the drum sounds, and yeah, once again, very metronomic. Not a problem. I mean, some songs call for a metronomic uh, approach. Uh, I just don't feel that every single song needs to be that metronomic. I just think uh, Alan Wilder did, did criticize them once in an interview saying he felt that their a lot of their music is too metronomic and it doesn't have groove. Now, once again, some songs require a metronomic feel. Uh, but, but you know, I certainly think there are some songs in here that, that could have, you know, benefited from a little bit more uh, ebb and flow and sway and swing and groove. And, oh, so getting into the groove there. Um, I just think it could have, uh, yeah, a, a bit more swing and sway. And um, also the, some of the, the snares, like, like, like on Ghost of Imp. You know, I'm a big fan of the snare, you know. And I don't mean every snare needs to go, boom. It doesn't need to be. But I just think the snares on, yeah, very often very underwhelming. It's that real sort of like drum machine snare. And whereas I do think using the same sort of drum, fundamentally the dr same drum sound all the way through, although it's not exactly the same. Uh, that is important for the for the sake of cohesion. And if we take Violator, which is, let's say, their best album ever. Uh, disagree with me if you want. Um, a lot of the songs in Violator, you know, there were similar sounds being used across different songs, which was kind of against the Depeche Mode philosophy. Remember their philosophy, never use the same sound twice? Of course, Flood said, that's bullshit. You know, you need cohesion and use the same sound twice and whatever. So that is why if you, I'm not going to give specific examples, but if you listen to Violator, they used, there were sounds 
from certain songs that were repeated in other songs, albeit slightly different variations. That gave it a sense of cohesion. And also, if you take songs like Wild In My Eyes, it's very craft work leaning, very, uh, you know, in the, in, in, in the groove and the rhythm and the, and the programming and the sort of mix decisions. But then also, if you take a song like Halo, uh, a completely different drum sound, more, more sort of like, more sort of, uh, I believe the snare, was that also used from When The Levee Breaks? I know they used the snare from where the levee breaks in uh, Never Let Me Down Again. A rumor has it they used it in that as well. Not sure, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong. The point I'm trying to make is, uh, in that example, you had Wild In My Eyes, which used a sort of craft work in kind of approach. And then you had Halo that had more of a, a sort of like a rock kind of uh, drum track. And it all fits well with Into The Same Album. In this, I just feel that the drum programming especially is, it, it's just too, it just lacks impact. And... Uh, and we, we could go a lot into that. And indeed, a more in-depth version of this video will appear on my streaming site, which is watchvg.com, and where you can see the rest of the Depeche Mode album review series as well. So um, I think I've said quite a lot on this. I uh, didn't want this video to be as long as it is, but hey, man, this is how we roll. What do I think of this album? What am I going to score it? And we're going to do the five questions. So question one, if you were to lose a song from this album, or in other words, if they repressed this and you had to decide which song should not be on this album, or which is the song which you skip the most? For me personally, it's Caroline's Monkey. Once again, it's not a bad song. It's not terrible. It fits well within the, you know, the story and the arc of the album as a whole. Uh, but for me personally, Caroline's Monkey is an instant skip. Question two, what is the most radical song on this album? And what do I mean by that? Radical meaning, you know, what is it? Is it quirky? It's usually a song which is quite sonically quirky or just a little bit different or striking. Examples would be like Personal Jesus was quite a radical track on the Violator album. Uh, Condemnation was quite a radical track on the Songs of Faith and Devotion album. And if we take a broken frame, there was the song Monument. Uh, so uh, quirky doesn't mean you like it or you dislike it uh, the most. It just means which is the quirkiest song to you. For me, the quirkiest kind of song on this album will be the People Are Good. It just, for for all its reasons, yeah, the craft work kind of leaning and just the way it sounds sonically, to me, People Are Good is the most radical track on this album. Question three, which track did you sort of listen to the most when you first got this album, which kind of, kind of jumped out at you? To me, it was personally, it was Ghosts Again. Uh, certainly the most poppy, probably some some might say the most least Depeche Mode song they've done in many years, but it certainly was the song that, you know, kind of resonated with, with me the most upon initial listen of this album. Question four, what is your favorite track now? And what I mean by that is, initially you would like something, but then as time goes by, uh, after listening to something for a while, you tend to favor something more and in the previous example my initial song that i like the most was ghosts again but i can say hands down without a doubt that my favorite song on this album i think the strongest song to me personally is always you for many reasons i think it's gore at his best dave's you know delivery the sounds used and everything i think always you is an absolute winner and my favorite song on this album and finally question five what am i going to rate this out of ten well as I said in the beginning, when I first heard a new Depeche Mode album was coming out, I was nervous, and I was nervous because I really didn't like Spirit, but I was excited. And I was also nervous because I wanted to like this. And as I said before, if Depeche Mode say to us, okay, guys, we're done now, I will say, thank you, guys, and you know, you've taken the bow, your time is done, you've given us some great albums, and you've left us on a high. So thank God this album did release because I would have hated it if Depeche Mode had ended after Spirit. Now, listening to this album initially, I I had, you know, a lot of emotions and, and stuff and really wanted to like it and I do like it. But upon initial listen, I would have probably rated this 8 out of 10. Now that score has dropped a little bit because, as I say, 
I don't like to review things initially. I, I need to live with them for a while. So I didn't want to be skewed by all the, uh, or, or influenced by all the, oh my God, is it a Depeche Mode album? I'm so happy. I, I, none of that. I'm glad I liked it. I'm glad I enjoyed it. You know, some songs took me a little bit longer to get into. Uh, some of the production decisions I've mentioned, I will go into in a lot more detail on my album review series. But I'm happy to give this album 7 out of 10. I think it's a good album. I don't think it's brilliant. I don't think it's outstanding. Um, I'd probably say it's the best album since Playing the Angel, probably on the same level. I don't find myself listening to it a lot. It's not going to be a go-to album for me. But as I say, it is a good album. I'm glad the boys are back. I'm looking forward to seeing them in Twickenham here in London very soon. And the rest is up to you. So I would like you to leave your comments in the description below. Question one, which is the most radical track on this album question two which is an instant skip which song would you lose from this album or which is the song which you tend to skip the most question three what was the song that you initially resonated with the most on this album question four upon listening to the album for a while which is now your favorite song and question five what would you rate memento mori out of ten I've given it a seven. I would love to see what your opinions are. At the end of the day, these are all just personal opinions. Nobody's right. Okay, so let's jump into just a little bit of breaking news. If you're a Depeche Mode fan, and I'm sure a lot of you know this, some of you may not, Brian Griffin and I have just started a crowdfunder for a book entitled Mode. Mode is the complete photographic collection by Brian Griffin covering 1981 to 1986. All the album covers the, the stories, uh, the negatives and transparencies, uh, unseen footage, a great book for any Depeche Mode fan. We've kept the price really reasonable and you can support the crowdfunder by clicking in the link in the description below. Um, I want to thank all of those of you who have funded it already and understand that this is a crowdfunding campaign. So if we do not reach our goal, it will not go ahead. But um, I'm, con I'm, I'm confident we will reach the goal. If you've got any questions, you can, as, as I say, just send Brian and I an email and we will respond to it directly. This is a small project. This is not endorsed by any big names. Brian and I are doing this ourselves, pretty much like everything that he's done on the Vaughan George channel. This is a small cottage industry and I do appreciate your support because you're supporting me and a family and this is not a corporate entity. So know that I'm grateful to you. I'm also very excited and happy to announce that on June the 13th here in London at the Strong Room, Gareth Jones is going to be doing a deep dive into the Construction Time Again album. We're going to take apart the multi-tracks and you can buy tickets to that event in the link in the description below. There has never been an event like this before. This is the first time Gareth is doing this. So come and join us in London. It is on the 13th of June. And then of course, on the Saturday, the 17th, I will be at Twickenham and I'll be going to watch our boys Depeche Mode performing and rocking the stadium and looking to looking forward to meeting many of you there. That's it, my friend. Um, it's been a while. It's good to be back. Lots of love. Leave your comments, and I'll see you on the next video. Adios.